Cinema 4D. Uh, this time I'm going to be showing you how to match your 3D animations with 2D images. So that way you can go to the internet and uh, find some cool images and uh, cast some really cool and awesome environments with uh, realistic shadows uh, for your animations on Cinema 4D. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I uh, hope you follow along. So um, I also put a folder for you guys with, uh, with a sample of the tutorial and uh, also in Cinema 4D and, uh, and also an uh, image for you to to follow up the tutorial easily so uh, let's jump on a new project and uh, let's go guys all right people so uh, in order for us to get that uh, looking cool thing uh, working and uh, casting some real cool shadows uh, it's really easy you just have to follow my steps so uh, the first thing i'm going to add uh, is a plane and on this plane i'm going to control c control v to copy this plane and bring the rotation around this and bring it over a little bit backwards and uh, Push it a little bit over here. Yeah, sounds cool. Uh, so that we can have um, some points to, to put our image uh, to, to cast that shadows with your animation. So uh, now I'm going to start adding the, the lights over here. And I'm going to put an infinite light. And uh, if you bring uh, your infinite light a little bit up and set the rotation around this, you see that. Um, like rotating this, you see that uh, the lights is casting the uh, the lights on the plane, and uh, this is really cool because uh, the the render times are really really fast because you don't need to use uh, uh, like render kits and, and all that stuff. So uh, I think uh, you you should find this uh, very useful for your animation. So uh, uh, now I'm going to start adding uh, more light, just uh, an area light over here. I'm going to bring it over a little bit up and set the rotation over. On the light over here, I'm gonna bring this onto minus 90, so that um, that the light casts uh, the shadow to the front. And uh, minus 90, it's okay. I'm going to just scale this a little bit down. I'm gonna push it over over here, just to see where the light is. I'm going to bring it over. See that the lights cast shadows on the plane, and uh, this is really, really nice. So, I'm going to set this uh, light over here. I'm going to control and drag uh, to set another light over here. I'm going to select both both lights, both the area lights, and on the general, I'm going to set this to uh, shadow soft maps over here. And on this light, I'm going to put this on the uh, over here, this infinite, okay. And on the shadow, I'm going to put on the ray traced heart. Uh, now, uh, if you grab like a, a sphere over here, set this a little bit down, and if you set a, a render, you see that you're already having, uh, how can I say, uh, a little bit of, of shadowing over here. And then you can set the, the sphere a little bit up so that we can have a, a more shadow uh, because light. Uh, uh, the light is more directed over here, so um, I'm going to grab my two lights. I'm going to rotate them on direction of the of the object that I want, and I'm going to set this over here. I'm going to set this like on the rotation over here, so that the, this can cast some lights uh, over the object. So uh, I'm now making a render to see whether is now you see that uh, the object the object is getting uh, more shadows. And uh, it's looking cool. So, uh, what what we need to, to do to make this a little bit a uh, little bit more realistic, we're going to cast some global illumination and uh, some ABN occlusion. And on the anti-aliasing, we always set this to best. And on the safe, you can set this to PNG. Uh, this is just for you when you make the render of your animation of your of your file. So, uh, you can set this. Uh, with the name render, and then you can save it over here. That's okay. And uh, I'm going now on the output. I'm going to start to putting this uh, so you can have like a, uh, the size of a screen of the animation and, and all that. So I'm going to put this to 90, 20, and this one to 
1080. So normally I work with this uh, with this resolution. I think it's quite uh, quite enough for for screenings and uh, intros and all that stuff. So uh, it has a really cool quality. So I'm going to set this over here. I'm going to start saving my file so that uh, if something happened, I always have my backup file. So this is going to be a tutorial. And it's saved. And now I'm going to start uh, adding some textures over here uh, for us to, to get this uh, looking cool. So I'm going to my folder where I have my image. And you can just drag this down to the, to the material editor. And uh, once you have that, uh, you can put this on the plane over, over here. And then this plane over here. So um, I have to rotate uh, these planes because uh, probably I had uh, the, the direction uh, badly, but uh, it's really easy. So you just have to rotate this around here, just uh, for 90, I'm going to coordinates, and uh, set this to minus 90. Okay, and this to zero, and this should be okay, and 65. All right, and then this one, I'm going to also rotate this to see, yeah, just put this on a minus 90 also, and it's okay. Um, and now, what I'm going to do uh, is just uh, put this a little bit, dragging over here, and uh, I think it's already looking cool. So, um, uh, once I have that, I'm going to set my camera over here, but I'm not going to turn it on uh, uh, right now because I'm going to rescale our planes uh, to set uh, a larger screen. I'm going to here, I'm going to set the scale over here and this should be cool. Uh, let's just try and make a render to see how this is going. So uh, I'm going to set over here and make a quick render and probably the, this should be already working and casting some shadows. So uh, once you see, uh, you see that you have like uh, the two images uh, like uh, like blended together, uh, blended together, but this this is really bad. So what you need to do here, you're going to grab the both textures, you're going to put this on frontal, and then uh, you're going to uh, right click on Cinema 4D text, you're going to put a compositing text. So uh, you're going to highlight uh, compositing background and unlight self shadowing, and you're going to uh, grab control and drag and uh, and place it over the, the, the other plane. So I'm uh, making the render now. It should be already uh, the plane and the and the background should be already blended. And then um, probably is looking already cool. So uh, yeah, but it is. So uh, you see that uh, the sphere is already casting some cool uh, like cool shadows. And uh, if you make an animation on this, uh, this should be working really fine. So uh, I'm going to also. Uh, leave you like the, that's a little bit small animation with some spheres for you to test a, a really cool render on this and um, let's make it out. So uh, I'm going to go on this sphere, I'm going to bring it up up with the camera over here, I'm going to control C, control V just to copy this, I'm going to bring it a little bit lower, like size about five should be cool. I'm going to bring the MoGraph over here and I'm going to set the sphere uh, child of a cloner. So on this cloner, I'm going to put this to object, and I'm going to set my object uh, to this sphere. Now what I have is like a like a bunch of spheres over here, and uh, we can do some uh, really cool thing on here. So uh, I'm going to set this sphere to off so that we we don't see this sphere. And on the cloner, I'm going to here. On the vertex, I'm going to put this to a volume. And now, uh, now if you play, you don't see like any animation because it doesn't have uh, like uh, can I say dynamics or collisions or anything. And uh, if you make a render on this, you probably see like uh, that this is already getting like uh, the reflections of the uh, of the whole sphere. You see like the the bumps of this uh, is like the bumps of the uh, of these spheres like uh, placing on this one. So um, I'm going to make a cool thing on this. So you're going to hide this sphere uh, and you're going to on this cloner, you're going to bring a, a simulation tags, a rigid body and uh, on this mass 
Uh, no, sorry, on the force I'm going to put the follow position like about about 9, 10, should be cool. And on collision, I'm going to set this to apply back to children and uh, uh, individual elements to all. And if you press uh, go backwards, if you press play, you see that your sphere is like, uh, getting like, uh, they, are, they are together, but not uh, trespassing each other. So uh, uh, now you can uh, put, uh, and you see the, the reflections here are looking really cool. And if you make like an animation on this, uh, all these shadows should be casting on the on this plane. So uh, I think it's a really cool thing uh, for you to learn here at uh, FX Channel House. So uh, I'm going to grab my cloner over here. I'm going to put an effector, a random. And on this random effector, I'm going to set the position to off. And on the scale, I'm going to put this on a uniform scale. I'm going to bring that over, over here about 137 just make it backwards let's see the spheres uh, already going so uh, make another quick render just to to see how this is uh, looking and I'm going to make uh, also a material for you to, to have like a cool render on this so uh, it's looking looking cool so uh, I think we can also like turn around uh, this lights uh, so this and uh, so this can We'll cast the shadows a little bit uh, for the other side. Uh, just make it over here and bring this one over here. Okay, and uh, you can also like um, uh, grab your light uh, that is um, the strongest light that that is getting uh, that shadows. You can uh, you can turn around uh, to the places that you want. You can also cast the shadow on this side and bring it over up, so you can. Uh, if you bring the uh, the light up, uh, you, you won't cast like a like a huge amount of shadow on the um, on the sphere. So uh, let me just bring this over here. Okay, uh, and now we can set our camera just for us to get the um, uh, right position uh, on this uh, on this render. So uh, I'm going to grab also this plane. Okay, and bring this not up but a little bit backwards. Okay. This is cool. Let's bring it a little bit over. And uh, I'm going to set my camera to a minus 90 over here. And this should be zero. All right. And uh, if you bring this, this over here, we should probably have a already like a direct uh, shot uh, on this uh, on this spheres or on this animation so uh, I think it looks really cool so uh, you can test it and uh, you can make a lot of things on this and um, I, hope, uh, I hope that you find this useful so uh, let me just create that uh, material that I was talking about and uh, this is really easy so I'm going to go to my texture and on the surface I'm going to put a checkboard and on this checkboard I'm going to set this guy to zero okay and I'm going to set this one to about six seven yeah six okay I set it to six now I'm going to copy this texture and go to the bump put the bump uh, on on I'm going to place this texture over here and the uh, if you see, if you bring the the, the bump a lot higher, you see that you have like a cool bump over here and a with uh, a really cool realistic thing. So I'm going to set also like a little bit of a reflection for this to be a little bit more realistic, and that uh, should be cool. I'm going to set the specular to off. I'm going to drag this uh, over my spheres. And uh, if you make a cool render on this now, just zoom this a little bit and bring it over here we should probably have a really uh, a nice uh, cool shot uh, on this animation and uh, on this scene you can use this like uh, on animations but uh, you have to uh, to know that uh, this is not uh, this is almost like a camera projection uh, this is not 3d mapping or this is not um, 
you, you can do this uh, with Buju uh, to have like a 3D render and rotate your camera. Um, that that works. But uh, if you want to rotate cameras on this, uh, you have to make um, you have to make 3D tracking. But uh, this tutorial is not about 3D tracking. This is just a uh, just a tutorial for you to showing you how to how to put a 3D image on a on a two on a two D image uh, and looking cool and uh, realistic. So I uh, hope you enjoy this tutorial and uh, hope you follow along because we're going to have uh, like uh, cool tutorials and uh, a lot of client projects uh, that we're going to release soon. And uh, see you guys. Uh